In today's video, I survived 100 days in better Minecraft Skyblock, which adds updated dimensions, a massive quest tree, new bosses that drop OP items with special abilities, alongside a bunch of other fun mods like a potential infinite storage system. Alrighty, so here we are on day one, and honestly, this is my first time playing a traditional Skyblock map, so I'm pretty excited. I spotted a chest right away, and... There was also this market stall right next to it, but this was still in development. These early days are going to be a lot of questing, which is first starting off with acquiring eight logs. As a reward, we got ourselves a cobble generator starter kit, which was awesome. Well, until I did this. At this point, I thought I was going to have to restart the world until I learned that if I right click the obsidian, it did something. Which I mean, I love when a mod creator knows that dummies are going to be playing the mod pack like me. But more importantly, this cobblestone seems to have some rainbow acne and you would really think i would have learned by now but here we are believe it or not i finally figured out the cobble generator which allowed us to complete our second quest with our rewards i made a string mesh followed by a strainer and then put down our new contraption in the water so it could start collecting a wide variety of important items putting that strainer down got me a farming starter kit which i wasn't going to complain about because my islands were about as bare as my lip when i was 16 late bloomer stand up i got some crazy loot out of my strainer and planted my cactus sugarcane and pumpkin by nightfall I made myself a fishing rod and furnace and then started making some charcoal because I was going to need some fuel to cook these fish I catch. Making the fishing rod also completed a quest which gave some food and bamboo. Next up was making some torches with the charcoal and then lighting up the island so we weren't having any creeper surprises. Then it was time to fish which was going to bring me quite a few surprises in the near future here. For starters, every time I caught a fish I got 1 XP towards the fishing rod's next level. The next surprise came when I caught a book and this wasn't anything boring like shape. Shakespeare. No, this was a crazy book to get on day one. The surprises didn't stop there though because the next catch gave us a lucky pad fragment and then the following catch gave us a feather falling four book alongside another fishing rod. After that was a normal book and at this point I started to think that fishing was going to be OP because of the amount of stuff we've gotten with a plain fishing rod is nuts. Just when I thought the fishing calmed down, we got a lucky pad, which we can combine with fishing rods later to enhance their abilities. Day two started off with leveling up the fishing rod, which gave it the fishing one enchant. This enchant basically amplifies the effects of other special fishing rods that we can craft later. So it's kind of useless on this vanilla fishing rod, but it's still kind of cool to track your fishing progress. I thought I'd fish a little bit more and got a legendary enchantment book, which had a bunch of different high level enchants on it. Once I was done fishing, I put all my enchanted books in a chest and I mean, when do you play Minecraft and have this many enchanted books on day two? After that, I planted my bamboo. I went back to mining cobble and remembered I could make a stone pick, which let me get raw iron from the generator. I mined for a little bit and then started smelting up some iron. To complete another quest, I made a flint knife, which got me a piece of grass. Well, a quest is a quest, but that's not the most exciting reward. Picking up my iron completed yet another quest, and quick disclaimer here, these early quests are all super easy with basic rewards, but later on they feel much less random and pointless, like defeating some bosses gets us some cool items. But yeah, early game, we gotta get through these setup quests. The rest of day two though, was just mining at the generator. The next three days started off with us making a crappie fishing rod. It's not crappy though, because this gives you regen for three seconds after catching a fish, which as you can see, we could definitely use right now. After fishing, I was cutting up grass for straw to complete a quest we unfortunately don't end up getting enough but once we get some bone meal later we can get some more grass to cut i then made some iron tools and mined the generator which was now giving us diamond which just felt weird next up was smelting some glass to make a glass bottle which was then used to get a bottle of honey followed by the upgrading of one of our strainers later on it started raining so i figured i should throw down a cauldron to get an extra source of water since iron wasn't an issue granted i realistically could have just made an infinite water source with all the water already on the island, but where's the fun in that, right? This is like Bear Grylls type stuff now. After that, I decided I wanted to mine out one of the islands to see if there were any goodies inside, which ended up netting us a grand total of one gold. Day four, I expanded our storage and spotted some dripstone at the bottom of the island, which was gonna be huge, and you're gonna see why. Thanks to a water bucket and some cobblestone, I was able to make my way over to some dripstone and mine it up. I also found random pieces of string down here, which didn't make much sense to me, but I'm not gonna complain about free materials in the skyblock world to effectively use this dripstone i was gonna need a couple cauldrons so i sat and smelted a bunch of iron which took forever we will definitely be upgrading the furnace later once i had the iron i made the cauldrons and threw them under this ugly cobblestone bowl and then threw the dripstone under it 
Now it was time to wait and boom, we have infinite lava now. Next step was to get a source block for each cauldron so each would produce lava and for whatever reason, these cauldrons filled up really fast, like unnaturally fast. I don't know what's different about it. That night though, phantoms did spawn, which ruined everything. At first I was trying to kill them off, but eventually more just spawned in. So I went and hid in my hollowed out island until daylight came. The best part about having the infinite lava was that it meant we no longer had to worry about fueling our furnaces because we have the best fuel in the game. While mining with the iron pick, I learned that it was able to also drop lapis, emerald, and redstone. Eventually, I had enough diamonds to make full armor and tools, which gave us some more rewards, including dripstone, which isn't super helpful at this point since we already got our own, but we also did get some obsidian. And since I wanted to get an enchanting table, I took the time to mine up obsidian utilizing the lava farm. Right now, both the islands are disasters, but once we have a good foundation, I'll start making some nicer looking builds. The last significant thing we did was actually making the enchanting table. Day 6 rolled around and started out with making a big old wooden square for mobs to spawn on because I needed to kill some mobs for a quest, strength for a bed, and more strength for another quest. After that I made a bow thinking that it would be good to use against the mobs and then quickly remember that I don't have arrows. How I didn't think of that I don't know because now we just wasted 3 strength but here we are. This day was very unproductive but I did make a shield at night then it was just waiting for some mobs to spawn on the platform that never ended up happening so I decided to make the platform even larger. Eventually some mobs spawned and I took them out. A creeper blew up on me and for some reason this mod pack has mob destruction turned off. I honestly don't know how to turn it back on so it's kind of a lucky bonus right now. The next set of days started off with me throwing my sword into a cactus so that was a great use of two diamonds. After that I completed the mob grinder quest which gave me a villager spawn egg and a brown mushroom. Bit of a weird combo in terms of rewards, but I guess villagers have noses that kind of look like mushrooms, maybe? Next, I chopped a tree down and started branching out to what would hopefully be our passive mob spawning area. I made sure to connect the grass so it would eventually spread to the island so we could actually get some passive mob spawns. Again, I'm a complete scrub when it comes to skyblock, so I was just hoping this would work. Following that was making myself a replacement sword. I wanted some dirt for the new dirt island, so I mined out a good chunk of our second island and threw some more dirt down. My next goal was to upgrade my strainers, which meant I needed a little bit of obsidian. The upgrade was super easy to make, but now this strainer was faster, enchantable, and would basically last us for this entire video. Upgrading the strainer got me some fishing supplies, which allowed me to make the corally fishing rod, which gave water breathing after catching a fish. I'm not going to lie to you, this is pretty useless to us, but still cool to get a different fishing rod. I went to try and eat one of the fish, and well, things were a bit more explosive than the arguments at the family Christmas dinner. Next was collecting more wood than a colony of beavers, followed by the making of some pistons for an automatic sugarcane farm. I was then heartbroken when I remembered I needed quartz to make the observers for the farm, which means we need to enter the nether, which of course doesn't end well. We did have some good news though, which was the fact that the dirt platform I made for the passive mobs was acting as a better mob farm than the wooden platform I made earlier. Things weren't all good though because when trying to keep this skeleton on the island to get the bones from him, I was knocked off into the void. Luckily we weren't playing hardcore for once and even better was the fact that it had a mod where I just fell back on my island. Granted, I died. But hey, at least I had my items. Day 9, the grass was slowly beginning to spread. And to help maybe increase the odds of it spreading, I thickened the dirt path to the island. The next project was making a cobble generator. And I was hyped for this because having a line of five of these multi-blocks to mine was going to be amazing. Not going to bore you with the building process. It's the same one as always. But there was bad news. It only generated stone. Now, I'm going to try and see if I can find a workaround later. But for now, we're going to have to live with what we got. The next two days started off with bone mealing and chopping up grass looking for straw to finish a quest pretty soon we completed the quest and got an iron knife which isn't super helpful but completing quest is just kind of satisfying i made a gardening table which got me a bottle of honey as a reward i then pulled leather out of the furnace i just realized i forgot to show you that part but if you cook rotten flesh in this mod pack it turns into leather which is fantastic because that's going to make getting an enchanting table way easier after kicking up some clay from the strainers i made a cooking pot to complete yet another quest chopped up some wood on a cutting board and made some organic compost look at that people we are going green to end the night off i made a stove which 
which ends up being one of the most satisfying cooking methods you will ever see. The next morning, I made some meat bundles, which allowed me to make a meat fishing rod, which had a 10% chance of catching a piece of meat every time I caught it. Fish. I fished basically all day and got a wide variety of books, so let's just do a quick list. Aqua Affinity, Combo Book, Protection 1, another combo, and yet another one that most importantly had Unbreaking 3 on it. Later that night, I remembered I could throw one of these lucky lily pads on a fishing rod, so I did just that. What's that do? Gives a luck bonus whenever I catch a fish. I bet there are some pretty unique ways to utilize this, I'm just not sure how to do it. The next book we've got had Acquisition on it, which is always good for any sort of skyblock world. We didn't get a ton of meat using this fishing rod but to end the night off we were lucky enough to get a meat bundle which is the equivalent of four pieces of meat day 12 i started to utilize the stove to cook off the fish we had and there was something just so satisfying about cooking on the stove rather than a furnace after chefing it up i mined a bunch of obsidian expanded the path to the dirt island and made the nether portal our next goal was to go to the nether and get ourselves some quartz and blaze rods right when we got in the nether i learned we didn't have the most ideal of spawns thanks to this hostile piglin base so i decided to tunnel my way and avoid my problems just like i do in real life fortunately i spotted what i thought was a nether fortress so maybe the spawn wasn't as bad as i originally thought while trying to bridge over some massive mosquitoes gave me malaria and forced me to fight this monstrosity of a pig i swear hoglins are the fucked up child of a pig and a rhino like that biologically just ain't right this ain't jake paul's zoo scam like, we don't need to just combine animals here. Once I made it to the tower, I grabbed up all the nether wort and soul sand so we could brew potions later. I went to investigate this red shooty stuff and was surprised by some blaze guardians. It took absolutely everything in my power not to walk in this stuff. And after about two minutes, the urge got to me. Hey, no. Hey, it's not too bad. Holy, what is this? And it gives wither. Okay, let's destroy all of these. I don't want to ever touch these ever again. One awesome thing about these nether fortresses are the doorways, though. They're really fun to mess with, and the sound is kind of satisfying. Exploring the fortress led me into a maze of these doors, and holy, we got a party here. Let's not spam open doors anymore. I got a chest after getting jumped, which had some decent loot. After the chest, I was rewarded with even more malaria, which was just fantastic. That's what I need. Pretty quickly, I developed a strategy of punching a hole through each wall to safely clear the rooms and stumbled upon a drug deal between some blazes and a goblin trader. Now, since I'm a good Samaritan, I handled the drug dealer myself and he dropped some carrots, which was actually huge because now we can farm them for potions and food. I found another chest, which had much better loot than the last one. The chest after that had an unbreaking book alongside a diamond and the chest after that chest had gold diamonds and a saddle honestly i get more excited for the gold because we have diamond printing cobblestone at home i just don't know how to get gold now i wish i could tell all you lovely people that the rest of this maze went super smooth and we got a bunch of good loot and a bunch of xp but i got a little too aggressive and found myself getting beat up in a corner just like the good old days of middle school let me tell you there's nothing like getting pummeled by the guy wearing enough axe to give a non asthmatic person in asthma attack my first trip back to the nether didn't go quite as planned but luckily the second time i was able to get my loot back and not have to worry about dying whatsoever like at all i just smooth sailing after taking out one more blaze room i was pretty much done with this place and just started making my way home on my way out i found a couple of chests on top of some other towers which was a nice parting gift the next two days were almost solely focused on completing the storage quest line alongside fishing the storage quests were really just a bunch of crafting so here's a super quick montage good news was that we finished all these storage quests that we could possibly do at this point i spent a couple minutes trying to figure out how it worked but was about as good at that as connie is at tweeting uncontroversial things so we'll have to watch some guides on how that works later the rest of the night was spent fishing for some reason my frame rate was absolutely tanking here so we're just gonna move on however as the sun rose we did level up our meat rod pause to level two and got ourselves a bunch of enchanted books after that i gobbled up some wood and what the fuck am i on right now anyways i started to expand to our second man-made island which was gonna house our farm area and i was excited to finally build something since we were super limited on building blocks i added the chisel mod to the mod pack and made it on day 18 i love this mod so much it gives you so much more variety for every block i went with a basic concrete look for the flooring and then started moving the cobble generator into the farm once that was in i started on the lava farm and decided to switch to chiseling smooth stone because it was a bit brighter than normal cobble which i thought looked 
cleaner. While chefing on day 20, I saw that the grass had almost made it to the dirt island. Later that day, I made my way into the nether to get some netherrack to chisel in order to add some variety of color to the farms. And don't worry, once all these farms are in, we are going to be making a nice building for it. The next farm was a simple automatic sugarcane farm, which was made using that beautiful chiseled netherrack. Day 21, I upgraded the sugarcane chest to an iron one so it would take longer to clog up. Later that same day, I also upgraded to an iron furnace which smelted things a bit faster. Now, I'm not sure if it's any more efficient than a normal furnace, but maybe one of you smart people can tell me. Day 22, I smelted up some sand from the strainers and completed the sugarcane farm. Due to some spacing issues, I had to create a new way to reach the mining area of the cobble farm, which will work for now. Not sure what we're going to do once we have walls up on the island, but that problem is for later. Day 23, our grass had finally spread, so I decided to further expand the island to hopefully increase the spawn chance of some animals. And look, there's our beautiful little island over there. Later that day, while fishing, a wandering trader spawned and, well, he kind of hung one of his llamas like a Christmas ornament, which I thought was a little messed up, especially since Christmas already passed. As punishment, I killed the wandering trader, and hey, why are you spitting on me? I'm not the one who dangled your brother over the edge of the island, buddy. That was him, okay? I was, I was taking care of a bad man. The trader did drop a bag of wandering, which dropped a wide variety of loot, with the coolest thing being the sword from elsewhere, which had a cool sweeping edge ability. The next day, I used all my gold I had gotten in the nether and upgraded the iron furnace to a gold one. Right after that, I took the brand new gold furnace and upgraded it to diamond. Then the rest of this day was mining cobblestone to build with. The next seven days were all focused on actually making the building for the farms. I started off by chiseling smooth stone into stone bricks and building up the walls. On the corners, I used a different kind of smooth stone to give it a little variation. Once the first level's walls were in, I went to the nether to get netherrack for chiseling. After that, it was time to throw in the first level of stairs. And now we had this ugly little hut. Don't worry though. I still got some work to do on it, but just remember how bad it looks now and compare it to when it's done. The next step was to basically repeat what I just did to add the second level. I took a little building break to check on the grass island and well, it was all grass now, but no passive mobs had spawned, which still kind of confused me. Day 27, it was back to the nether to mine, followed by adding the second stair trim to the build. I then add some little pillars to the front and well, this still wasn't looking good. And at this point, I was honestly getting a little worried that this build was just going to be trash and I'm wasting my time. So to give it some more layering, I went around and added a slab trim to the bottom. That trim alone made a big difference in my opinion, but I got some more ideas to make it look even better. While trying to add onto the build, I fell off and well, let's just say this water bucket was a bit of a fail. But to be fair, a water bucket stair save means you only have like half a block to land on to successfully do it. So I don't suck that bad. I'm just not elite. For the second floor, I decided to give it some open style windows, which I thought would look pretty clean. The flooring is where things got a little bit tricky because some of the farms were a bit too tall. I will say though, I absolutely love these diamond shaped stone slabs. I ended up just covering up the top of the sugarcane farm with netherrack slabs. That's a little odd, but I kind of like the way it gives the room some more variety and height and color. That might just be me coping with it, but uh, I don't know. I don't think it looks bad. You tell me. To fix the awkward gap in the floor from the cobble farm, I just brought the lava sources up an extra block and then threw the iron trap doors over them for safety reasons and actually ended up liking the way it looked. To me, it really adds a bit of like an industrial farming type feel and also acts as a cool light source so it's just perfect. Day 30, I added the ladders to access the second floor and added some more detailing to the outside. Finally, on day 31, I mined some more netherrack in the nether and completed the roof. Day 32 and 33 were focused on officially completing this build. The first day, I decided I wanted to try and make a stone generator for the multi-block. To do this, I basically just made a heinous stone generator that I would have made back when I was like 12. The key in making this was the fact that the lava couldn't be above the water source like the common stone generator and after about a day's work, we had ourselves a multi or generator. The convenience that comes from this build is unmatched and the production from it later is actually insane. The next day, I was mining a ton of iron so I can make a bunch of lanterns for the outside of the build. Day 34 wasn't anything too exciting. It was kind of a planning day, so not a ton happened outside of me chopping down some trees, destroying the little mob island and outlining our next island. Of course, I'm going with circles as I always do in Skyblock. I just love the way they look. Now, if you can guess what this island's going to 
be used for, I will give you a fake waffle. The next set of days started with me using every bit of oak wood to put in the flooring of what was going to be our storage area. If you guessed that, good job. Here's your fake waffle. I got sick of constantly running out of materials, so I went to the nether and mined up a ton of nether rack so I'd at least have a basic building block. The next morning, I used just about all of my iron to make an anvil and then used books to make an efficiency 5 of breaking 3 pick. I then went back to getting that nether rack, which ended up being around 15 stacks. After making that anvil, I was pretty low on iron, so I spent the rest of day 36 mining with a stone pick. Later on, I think I'm going to have to enchant a nasty stone pick just so I can get iron a lot quicker. Day 37, some more passive mobs spawn and I quickly box them in with fences. About this time, I had chopped a couple trees, so I took the time to put in some more flooring. Then after that, it was back to mining in the nether and prepping the materials because we needed a lot of stuff for the next project. That project took place over the next three days, which was a mob farm. I feel like I say this every time, but it's the same boring one as always. So let's just make this a quick explanation. First, you make this phallic looking tube. Fortunately for us, I added the chisel mod, so the structure would be a little more interesting. Once you got that tube installed, you make some sketchy bridges and then almost fall to your death because you thought there was a water source at the bottom of your phallic tube. After that, you childproof these sketchy bridges, fill the gaps like a blitzing linebacker, and then turn this into the world's most dangerous water slide ever. Which reminds me of something. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is gonna get really random and weird, but I once had this dream where I was at a water park, but it was basically like the Fall Guys teeter-totter things towards a massive pool. And to make a long story short, safety wasn't the biggest priority at this imaginary park because I went up the wrong side of one of these teeter-totters. And I should mention that these uh, teeter-totters were like 50 stories up in the air. Ridiculous, I know, but just hear me out. Like I was saying, I went up the wrong side of the teeter-totter and next thing I knew, I was heading for cement instead of water. Fortunately though, I woke up before testing cement as a trampoline. And look, before any of you little physics nerds say it yes i know falling in water basically becomes the same thing as hitting cement after a certain height but hey it's my weird dream okay day 43 i sat and farmed the mob farm all day day 44 i went and checked the loot and found a witch bag which contained a strange mixture drinking this is basically the equivalent of eating domino's pizza it's either absolutely delicious or my stomach feels like world war three was just started in there i feel like everyone's got a restaurant that treats them like that i mean you got domino's olive garden taco bell chipotle i feel like those are the common ones i don't know if i'm missing any next up i threw rotten flesh into the furnace to get all the leather we needed for books and then chop some trees i put this fresh wood to work just like will smith's handyman did after taking a shower in mr smith's house too far hopefully not he's a nice guy i, I couldn't help myself after the flooring i grabbed the sugar cane from my farm made some books and found a bunch more books i had saved from fishing earlier day 45 a wandering trader spawned and i of course killed him and his vicious llama so i could open his wandering bag from the bag i I got the hammer from Farlands, which did 16 hearts of damage, which is wild. And I mean, we were looking pretty snazzy with it. Kind of felt like the dollar store version of Thor, except for not the new one, because that movie sucked. After my murder, I put down the enchanting table in the middle of the second island, because I didn't have a place for it yet. I don't know what mod changes this, but in this mod pack, you can cycle through enchants, which makes enchanting so much easier, because you don't have to burn so many levels. I cycled a pickaxe looking for silk touch, and when I found it, I got an absolute beast of a pickaxe, which I then used to mine stone for the rest of the day. The next set of days, it was time to create a very versatile build that was going to hold my storage, enchanting area, and farming area all on this plotted island. I have a lot of boss killing to do, so I'm trying to be as efficient as possible right now in terms of what I spend my time building. I honestly had no clue what this was going to look like while building it, but I had a very basic of idea of how I would structure it to hold everything I wanted. It's funny because I'm making this sound like it's some like rocket science when in reality my plan is about as basic as it can get day 47 i ran out of wood so i chopped a thick tree and as you can see we really need that farm because i've resorted to eating rotten flesh by day 49 i was putting in what was basically a false ceiling it's basically just for aesthetic purposes and keeping the interior ceilings all the same height once that was done i threw in all the dirt for the farm area to make sure every piece of dirt could be saturated i put some additional water source blocks in the edges of the farmland which i think is a great way to subtly fix the problem. Then I bone milled wheat and carrots to fill in their sections, and this was the completed product. Well, 
kind of i forgot to get the clip when i originally finished the build so this is later on in the video which is why those crops are all there and is also why i can't do a complete loop around the build like i normally do because i can't spoil the rest of our builds for the video the next four days are all related with trading with these materialistic con artists after mining for a little bit i went home and smelted all my gold found myself a piglin to shower with gold and waited for the trading i was really hoping for a ton of string and ender pearls for a couple different quests the string was needed for wool for elevators which really isn't all that important but it would be nice now the ender pearls on the other hand are super important because we need a ton to craft the end portals later on by the end of our first session of trading we got an abysmal nine string and zero ender pearls since we completely failed in getting what we needed it was time to find more gold while running around looking i found some more of these tower chests which had gold in an unbreaking book i went home and smelted all the gold and enchanted a shovel while looking for a piglin to trade in the nether i found myself in a fight with a gas and found myself being randomly poisoned by mushrooms on the ground which in turn leads me to freaking out and getting hit by a gas shot that ends up killing me luckily when i got back to my body the gas was gone once i found a piglin to trade with i threw more money at it than drake does to strippers on an annual basis and while well, round two of trading didn't go much better but we did at least get a bonus ender pearl from completing the string quest the eventual goal is to get the remote storage system up and running and to do that i needed to create a lot of storage space my strategy in doing this is upgrading chests all the way up to the crystal level which makes their storage huge the first upgrade is to iron chests which is normally pretty expensive but we can print basically any ore except gold which means i am back in the nether searching for it during my search i found some soul cords which looked pretty awesome i also found some endermen and decided i would abuse the fact that they don't have knees and built a safety umbrella to kill them <laughs> We only got one ender pearl, which means we're going to have to come back and do a lot of farming later. I then spotted these cool looking rock dudes who kept chucking their little minions at me and they were literally impossible to reach when there was two of them. So eventually after almost dying, I decided to just run away. Day 58, I found even more of these towers, which gave me another unbreaking book and some gold. When I got back home, I smelted down all the gold and upgraded the iron chest to gold. Next up was diamond chest, which just needed diamonds and glass. It honestly would have been easier if it was just eight diamonds around the chest since i can only get sand from the survival sifters i have fortunately though i made that upgraded version earlier so sand isn't a problem day 60 i upgraded all the chests to diamond and then crystal so the objective was complete these chests are awesome because the storage space is massive and you can see the items floating around inside the chest which is really cool to make all the cables for the storage system i was gonna need a decent amount of iron so i decided it would be a good time to enchant that stone pick which led me to the mob farm i took the unbreaking enchant and was only given unbreaking so i just dipped into my fished books and made a god level stone pickaxe which just felt wrong the next two days started off with using our new pickaxe and in a literal 18 seconds we had over a stack of iron with some of that iron i made some network cables and began the process of connecting everything it was gonna have to travel pretty far so for aesthetic reasons i wanted all the piping to run underneath all the islands needless to say this was quite a tricky process after the piping i moved the enchanting table to the second floor of the new building and put down some enchanting room essentials once i was in i was up to the top of the farm bone mealing wheat for food and then spent the night bone mealing a potato i had gotten from the mob farm to finish off the crops day 63 was just me flattening out the second island so i could build some sort of home base for my bed and the hub for the storage network day 64 through 66 were all focused on prepping for a boss fight against the netherite monstrosity the first day was just grinding levels at the mob farm the second day is when i actually started enchanting some fresh diamond armor making sure to get protection for on everything I put on breaking on a helmet and feather falling on my boots to finish off the enchants. I also got sharp four on the wandering sword, but the hammer was still much stronger. So we are probably going to stick to using that for now. So instead of just leaving sharpness on the wandering sword, I decided to get looting three on it for farming Enderman later. And here's a peek at our schnazziness before the fight. While looking for the netherite monstrosity, I found a piglin encampment that I cleared pretty easily. I also found some ghosts to fight while exploring. Mid day 67, the netherite monstrosity health bar finally popped up on the top of my screen, which meant it was close. And soon after, I spotted the structure that housed the boss. I got to the top and took my time killing all these random mobs so I didn't have to deal with them while fighting the boss. I accidentally activated the netherite monstrosity while climbing around, and the guy just started shooting lava missiles at me, and boy, 
this lava was hurting a lot. I boxed myself in to gather myself and regen some HP because this is not how I wanted the fight to start out. I then hopped down, blocked his attack and smacked him a couple times. After that I started to bow him down but since I didn't take the time to enchant the bow it didn't deal much damage. Why I didn't think to enchant the bow I'm not too sure. Fortunately he got himself stuck so I was able to safely bow him down until I eventually ran out of arrows. He then went back to spinning lava balls at me and now I was starting to panic because half of the battlefield was covered in lava. The strategy was pretty much the same until he did this ground slam and freed himself from the trap. Once he escaped there was so much lava that I had to jump around and place the blocks to stay safe and at this point I noticed that my shield was starting to get really low on durability so I had to make sure I was healing in case the shield breaks on me. Now after each attack I had to run back and regen health so I wouldn't just die. I thought I only had about one more block in the shield so I decided it was going to be all or nothing. And after a couple smacks of the face we had defeated the netherite monstrosity. I dropped the Infernal Forge and Monstrous Horn, and lord was this hammer snazzy. The horn could be combined with a netherite helmet to make a monstrous helm, which seemed pretty powerful. The Infernal Forge not only hit hard, but also had an ability that dealt massive AoE damage, which I thought was really cool. The only thing it's missing was an animation. The rest of this time was spent looking around the boss area for bits of hidden ancient debris and gold. This last piece ended up being a bit of a mean trap and a goblin trader spawned at the perfect time which let me get two bonus netherite scraps for trading with him. Alright quick intermission here, I have a discord that I kind of let die and I want to try and bring it back because it's a good spot for me to interact with you guys and for you guys to interact with each other. So if you want to check down in the description I will have the discord link. Again I'll be in there and we got some great people in there, our moderators are also great so just check it out. Day 69 I completed the ancient debris quest which gave us a free wither skull which is going to be important because we need to kill a wither to unlock the awful gas boss. After that I made all the netherite ingots I could, upgraded our helmet to netherite and then combined it with the monstrous horn. And look, I'd love to say I look snazzy here, but it kind of reminds me of those creepy Silent Hill nurses for some reason. So it's kind of giving me the heebie-jeebies. The last thing I did on day 69 was outlining what was going to be our home base. The next 10 days were all spent on building this new base. The first day was me setting up the general shape of what was going to be a yin and yang type design. By the second day, I was replicating the design for the roof of the build. The third day was spent mining netherrack and stone. The day after that was putting in these pillars and then trying to decide what design I was going to use for the larger wall sections. This continued on to day 73 until I committed to this keyhole looking shape and put that on all the walls. Day 74 I was at the mob farm until I got enough XP to enchant a diamond pick with fortune. Then it was time to explore the nether looking for quartz. Day 76 I took my new quartz blocks and cut them into vertical slabs which I then used to fill in the big walls. After that I came to the realization that the designs were one block too far out which I then fixed and then finished filling in the walls. Once the big walls were complete I filled in the remaining gaps with these nice chiseled quartz pillars. For the roof I originally tried going with a glass ceiling however midway through I realized it looked awful. Now this is why you should always like plan your builds in a separate world because it'll save you a lot of time. Like realistically this build time could have been cut in half if I had just better planned out what I wanted to do but instead I did a lot of trial and error. Day 78 I was filling in the roof with both quartz and netherrack slabs. Day 79 was digging out the bottom floor and putting in the spruce flooring. Day 80 I chopped a massive spruce tree, put in the second floor and added some stairs to improve its accessibility. After that I combined a pick with a book to give it acquisition so I could recenter the cables without losing them all. I then ran them up through the center of the base and placed down both the network root and storage table which now meant we had a massive searchable storage system which could literally become infinite if I wanted it to which is just crazy to me. I need to start dipping into tech mods more because if they're anything like this this is awesome and this is like obviously really simple. Day 81 I realized I was low on food so I grabbed a hoe and performed some of the most satisfying farming of my life. With all that wheat I made some bread. Now to make the remote pass for the storage system I needed two more slime so I crafted a hunting post placed it down and used our villager spawn egg so now we had a slime trade. I had a total of seven emeralds which was just enough to get those last two slime balls and with those slime balls and a new storage core I crafted the storage remote. Once I had that I linked it to my system and bam now I could access my items from anywhere at any time even in different dimensions. Day 82 I crafted a bunch of buckets and 
filled them with lava so I could store them next to my furnace as a more convenient source of fuel instead of having to run back to the lava farm every time. Then it was time to break all the chests and put the contents into the storage system which was incredibly easy thanks to the remote. After that I sat at the mob farm getting XP to enchant one of the strainers. On my way to the enchantment table I decided to evict the farm animals I had been so patient for since I really had no use for them. On the strainer we got some pretty good enchants and honestly did I need to enchant this? Probably not, but I wanted to. Now at this point, I realized my mistake because I still needed wool and I just killed my one source of wool. So instead, I added a mod to reset a villager's job, even if you already have traded with them. However, it takes emerald blocks to complete. Hopefully, you guys don't mind me adding in mods to mod packs to make the video like flow better. I just do it so it produces better content and I always make sure to not add any OP mods. But since we needed a bunch of emerald blocks, it was time to mine for a while. Unfortunately, the emerald drop rate wasn't very high so this took up most of the day but what it did give us was a boatload of diamonds and I'll show you in just a minute how many we got because it's absurd. Once I had the emeralds I made the blocks and gave them to Mr. Marin here until he was sufficiently bribed. I slapped the loom down and there was our shears trade which is one of the biggest ripoffs I've ever seen. The worst part about this is the fact that it's not even guaranteed we get a wool trade on the second level which will mean this was all a complete fail. This time mining we were much less luckier in terms of emeralds because it only took us about 30 seconds. Oh, and uh, here's our diamond total at this point. Yeah, it's uh, it's silly. I woke the villager up to trade and got him to level two, which gave us two carpet trades, which meant I just got harder than a 13 year old's pillow which wasn't ideal our next set of days had the goal of getting wither skulls to be able to fight the wither which like i said earlier will unlock the awful gas boss while looking for a fortress in the nether i found a structure i had never seen before so i went to investigate before entering i made sure to utilize my storage remote and make a fresh shield once on the tower, I broke in and dropped down on an incomplete wither spawner. Thank God it's got some goofy AI because this first guy would have definitely jumped right over my panicked wall here. Needless to say, I do not play Bed Wars. Right behind me was another one which was fortunately stuck on these pusher blocks and it was nice enough to drop a skull. I then sat there and farmed up the incomplete withers and I'm 99% sure these guys have almost a 100% drop rate because I was getting an obscene amount of wither skulls from them. Pretty quickly I had more than enough skulls so I moved on investigating the place. While trying to fight this reinforced blaze I got double pushed down out of the tower which was just rude. The blaze did drop some armor scraps which can be used to make some really important armor for the off gas fight while fighting some more blazes the monstrous helmet ability activated which gives you an insane amount of buffs i ended up making a big loop and found myself back farming some more incomplete withers after some more exploring i made my way into this massive room that ended up having the awful gas altar now this altar is where we have to place the nether star we get from the wither to summon the awful gas in this room there was also a bunch of tungsten ore which is what's combined with the blaze armor to make the tungsten armor now this armor is special because it provides protection from both fire and wither effects when i got home the next day i sat and smelted the tungsten ingots once all the ingots were smelted i went ahead and enchanted a bow because we were going to need a good one for these upcoming boss fights next i made the set of tungsten armor and I actually think this armor looks pretty snazzy. Then I started enchanting all the gear with blast protection because both the wither and awful gas deal blast damage. And lastly, I enchanted a bow with flame on it to make the pew pewinator. The next day was all focused on brewing up potions. I started off by making strength potions and upgrading them to strength two. Then I made some regen potions and also upgraded them to regen two. And the last set of potions were swiftness potions that I also upgraded to swiftness two. Day 87 was quite an eventful day. Starting off I climbed to the top of the nether and summoned the wither boss. This fight is normally pretty intense but thanks to this tungsten armor there was no wither effect so the scariest aspect of the fight is now obsolete. When I got him into his melee form I drank a strength pot and started smacking this guy in the head like I was playing whack-a-mole. In addition to the nether star, he also dropped a heart canister, which when used permanently adds an extra heart to your health bar. Since this was the case, I decided it would be a good idea to fight another wither. This way we'll have an extra nether star for a beacon if we want one, and more importantly, we'll get another bonus heart. Day 88, I made some more swiftness potions and then headed back to the nether to face the awful gas. While traveling through the nether, I made sure to wear my diamond armor to preserve the tungsten armor due to the fact that a lot of it didn't have unbreaking on it, and my diamond boots also had 
prevent feather falling, which makes traversing the nether a lot easier. When I got to the altar room, I made sure to cover all the traps on the floor and block all the entrances to make sure no reinforced blazes come in mid-fight, because that's the last thing we need. Then it was time to pop a couple potions and summon the boss. And instantly, this boss had me in a panic because it was just a constant bombardment of fireballs. The hardest thing about this fight was the fact that every time it hit you, it would put whatever item you had in your hand on cooldown, meaning you have to strategically pull out your bow in order to hit it. While running around like a headless chicken, I found a safe spot to shoot the boss, which I took advantage of for a while, but made sure to kill it in a fair way with the pew pewinator to end it off. I checked out the loot the next day and noticed that we got ourselves an awful gun which was basically just a ghast cannon. Killing the ghast also completed a quest with a very useless reward. Our next goal was to get to the end to face three more bosses which meant we were gonna need a ton of ender pearls to craft the portal frames. While looking for endermen I found myself in this warped enderman shack which has some really good loot in it. Some of them dropped some warped ender pearls which are basically just damageless ender pearls. Not the most useful but still nice to have. Then came the three day journey of solely farming endermen in the same general area. This was so incredibly unfun that if it wasn't for random film reviews on YouTube, I would have died of boredom. One fun part was grouping a massive crowd of zombie piglin like I was playing COD zombies and shooting them with the awful gas gun. I learned pretty quickly that it was better to shoot right next to them rather than directly at them when trying to hit the entire group. And after that fun, I eventually finished farming the needed ender pearls. At this point, I still hadn't found a traditional traditional nether fortress with all my time spent in the nether so I went ahead into my test world and tried using the locate command because I needed to find one for a quest and for whatever reason this mod pack doesn't generate vanilla fortresses even after I teleported thousands of blocks away so with that I went ahead and auto completed the quest so we could continue the quest line after that I crafted the ender pearl blocks and crafted the portal frames lastly I put the portal down in the upstairs of the main house day 94 it was back to farming enderman with the goal of 10 more ender pearls so we can craft the eyes of ender once i had enough i did craft the eyes and put them into the frames completing the portal Day 95, I hopped in the nether and now it was time to fight the ender dragon. I always love the better end mod because the crystal towers are always so much cooler than vanilla. Now like always, step one was to snipe the crystals and thanks to my sniping abilities, I almost never missed. Once those were out, the fight was pretty much standard until my hammer from the far land literally banished the dragon to the shadow realm. At first I was worried I broke the game, but since I could still hear the dragon, I had hopes and eventually saw the big lady come back down, which of course led to her demise. Defeating the dragon did give us another heart canister, which was greatly appreciated. This also completed a quest, which gave me the materials to summon the void worm boss. Once I had this little squiggly worm, I threw it into the void and boom, we were now fighting our second boss off already in the end which was an interdimensional worm the sounds this thing makes is what i imagine a base boosted bathroom break sounds like after eating chipotle but this fight ended up being pretty easy overall thanks to the nice bow we had enchanted earlier and loot wise we were granted the void worm eye and its mandibles which can create an interdimensional pickaxe that is actually pretty awesome because you basically mine the air to create a portal back to your spawn point now it was unfortunately time to go find an end city which either takes two seconds or an entire eternity there's no in between at least with the better end mod though the world is a lot prettier to explore than the vanilla version it's basically like comparing the sahara desert to the world of avatar 2 while exploring i spotted a wrecked ship and just like always there was not a single piece of loot in it like i appreciate the immersion it adds but if you could find a super low durability elytra in here that would be awesome the next interesting thing i found was a building with some floating manatee things outside that were actually really cute Inside the building were flying shulker boxes that were quite annoying while I was trying to mine the corundum ore. My favorite biome in this mod pack is always the lightsaber forest because, well, I'll be honest, I'm a huge Star Wars nerd, so anything that resembles it is automatically cool to me. On day 98, I also discovered this gorgeous aurora biome, which led me to an end city with a ship. 
I really didn't loot the end city all that much outside of the tower with the shulker boxes in it. Once that was done, I made my way onto the ship, stole the end crystal, cleared the hole, looted the chest, and of course, grabbed the elytra. I also completed the void worm and elytra quest, which gave me the items needed to get to the abyss dimension and rockets for the new elytra. However, we all know my business isn't done here because I still have one major boss to take care of. So on day 99, we're going to do exactly that. After a bit of flying around, I found a end compound. At this point, the loot didn't really mean anything to me anymore. It was more about slaying that boss. Now, protecting the boss on the first level was this ender golem who had this sick ground attack. This guy was basically an earth bender in the end. So I guess you could call him like an end bender, which sounds equally cool as it does suspect. In reality though, with good gear and a shield, this golem doesn't pose much of a threat. Defeating the golem gave me the void core item, which allowed us to be end benders ourselves. First time I've gotten any end action in years, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, and completing the ender golem quest got me a netherite apple, which looked really cool, and I'm sure it's really OP. The second defender of the big boss was yet another end golem, which again, wasn't anything too difficult. However, when we finally reached the final boss, this is where things got intense. Like once this game started playing music, mid fight i knew i was in for something serious reminded me of like prime skyrim days where like fighting any dragon was the most intense thing ever at first i was using the sword from elsewhere but then made the risky move of swapping to the hammer mid fight i also threw the netherite apple into my hotbar and even utilized the storage remote to grab a pair of boots to replace my broken ones and now it was finally time to go on the offensive against this beast once i got the boss down to half health i broke his helmet off which led him to ground pounding us onto an even lower level we were in a full-on arena now which was pretty sick i figured at this point this was his final stand so i popped the netherite apple and just went all in on him and ended up obliterating him completely And just look at all these buffs from this apple. I mean, it's just ridiculous. The Ender Guardian dropped his gauntlet, which could be used to pull living entities toward me. Completing the quest gave me an end dungeon spawner, which sounded cool at first until after using it, I learned it was just another one of these buildings. I will say though, it felt weird just right clicking a structure into existence. And finally, day 100 rolled around while flying back to the end portal. When I got back home, I messed with Marin using the gauntlet and man, this would make moving villagers around so easy if you're trying to make a breeder or trading hall but yeah that was 100 days in the better minecraft skyblock mod pack i had a blast making this one and i just want to say thank you to anyone who's made it this far in the video and an extra thank you to my lovely supporters over on patreon with all that being said stay safe out there everyone it's a crazy world we live in so just enjoy the little things in life